So we're here looking for a bog iron with Cody from Cody's lab. And we found iron. It's just not the kind we were looking for. You see, right down here, we've got this big old dead cable. Is this a skewish cable or something? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's more iron you're ever going to find in the bog. Yeah, but it's all like high carbon steel, too. But that's not really the principle here. The principle is making stuff from scratch. And so we're looking for ore, even though the finished product is available. Let's update. We haven't found it yet. We've been hiking uh, the trails about a mile and a half up to Pittsburgh Lake, which is pretty close to the bog that we're trying to access. We know it's here because the internet has told us so. <laughs> and the internet does not lie. You would know this, of course. Yeah. You're watching this on the internet. <sighs> we can see a ski resort up here in the distance. I don't know how well you can see that. That almost might be easier just to hike up to there and then ride the tram down. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Anywho, one of the things that this highlights is just how technology is dependent on the resources that are immediately accessible to you. And there's two ways to do that. Either live right next door to it, or be friendly with people who do enough that you can trade for it. It's a really interesting thing. In the ancient world, copper has some technological advantages. It's easier to smelt and process, but it only really occurs in very specific places. And so you need extensive trade networks in order to preserve the Bronze Age. However, you compare that with the Iron Age, iron grows in everybody's backyard. If you have a swamp or a bog, you have access to iron through this stuff. We're in the Western United States. We do not have access to a lot of bogs. But, you know, it's interesting. It's harder to smell, but everybody has it. See this? Do you see this? Joseph, do you see this? I think we're in business. This is looking really good. Look at that rusty, rich red color. Okay. The bog supposedly is right, right where Cody is standing. So we're going to go over that way and see if we can't find some good old... Fashioned, and when I say old-fashioned, I mean like really old-fashioned bog ore. That is some pretty good staining right there. So do you think that is originating from this stone, or do you think it's water cascading over the top that's then maybe precipitating? Maybe water is coming out of the pores in the rock. Worth hitting it with a hammer? I'm going to hit it with a hammer. I'll hold the camera for you. Okay. It could be some kind of sandstone. Yeah, it's just a staining, though. It's interesting. Oh, you found a clutter pin. I did. Somebody's unhappy. <laughs> this is more iron that we found. That's not what we're it's looking for. spring steel. Yeah. You could probably make a bloom if you had a, a enough of it. <laughs> oh, that looks like a good way to get hypothermia to me. No. That's almost like a lady of the lake type thing from King Arthur. <laughs> Keep heading up. And we are trying to find iron. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool little waterfall over there. That's nice. Yeah. So, okay, so if this dirt is not what we're looking for, how are we going to find the dirt we are looking for? Supposedly there's an actual bog bog. Do you have a GPS coordinates? Um, so I have a GPS. I don't have coordinates. Hold on. Um, do you have cell phone reception right here? No, I don't think so. Because I stumbled into some just a minute ago. I didn't. Two miles down. Right? Hmm. Oh, people of the internet, what you see here is insufficient planning. I won't say poor planning, because we've gotten here. But, like, <laughs> the bog is not here. It's somewhere here. And we well, you know when it. you're in a city, if you're within a mile of something, then you can find it, and that's not a problem. Yeah, here you But if you're in the woods... You could be in a, a mile away from something and never find it, ever. Well, I mean, 50 feet in every direction is a tree. <laughs> yeah, you could be 100 feet from something and never find it. Is this it? I think this is it. Within like 100 feet. Within like 100 feet. Okay, that's good. Ow, shots. Wow. 
Five, five, three, eight. Three, eight, four to be precise. This clearing does look suspicious, doesn't it? Did you find? Oh, that does look good. That looks incredible. Joseph, uh, Joseph! That's... Joseph, check this out! Yeah, that's it. That's it? Found it's gotta it. be. <laughs> Light's going light, yeah. Well, I would say this is an adventure and not a misadventure, and that's good. Oh my gosh, look! Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Oh, yeah, it looks like some... look at this. oh that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Success! Oh my gosh! This is like a pile made of pure rust! It's also a hard as hard as a rock. <laughs> well, sign. Look at this! Good. Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Yes, yeah, so if this stuff doesn't work in a smelt, Joseph, could you say that again? Sure, yeah. I mean, you can see this stuff. If it doesn't work in a smelt, then the problem's not the dirt, the problem's us. So, <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Oh, goodness. Okay, that's incredible. Okay, the color we're going to need to get some better lighting for, but that is like red, red, red stuff. I think this is the richest iron ore <laughs> ever seen. That's awesome. Okay, so this is why the ancient world was using this stuff, because it was like, I mean, you find this in a bog. It's metal dirt. Wow, look at that. That's pure iron hydroxide right there. <laughs> so cool. Look at how it's staining your fingers. Yeah. Like this is what the Rettleman would use to mark a sheep. That's crazy. Look at that. It's frozen. It's actually pretty astounding. It's beautiful. Just uh, it's incredible the color. It looks like it has burned here before. You said yeah, they yeah, had I checked some of the wood out there. It's charred. Yeah, you said they had problem bog catching fire. Yeah. Well, that black there. Is that <laughs> yeah. I imagine there was trees growing in the bog. You know, one thing I'd really like to try with this uh, iron hydrate. Yeah. Is I'd really like to make um, cave art. Like Lascaux style stuff. Okay. I, I have a sister who's a really good artist. As long as the rain doesn't hit it, it should uh, last a long time. You know, in a cave. I don't know. <laughs> so we got enough there? Never. If that was full of water, it wouldn't be. It would be heavy. How heavy is it? it? It's almost like you filled it with charcoal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it'll be easy to carry down. That's awesome. So we didn't have to resort to panning iron out of the river. <laughs> we need to get going before it looks like the sun's just about ready to set. <laughs> you guys... Just a normal day carrying home 40 pounds of bog iron. Bows of war. Huh. You want to just try... What if we go down and put it on the side? It's not that deep. You want to just get your feet wet? No. <laughs> Yeah. Or we could do that, you got it? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You got that pan? <clears throat> what do you think of this? Uh, well, it's icy, it's snowy. We're probably gonna die and break our necks in that order. But we haven't yet. No, this is encouraging. In our data set, there's absolutely zero occurrences of slipping and breaking our necks. We're dying, so technically we're immortal. Okay, bye. <laughs> Brought home a bucket worth, which is sitting in the in the car right now. But I also carried some in my pockets nice. because you can never run out of this stuff. I'm gonna take a sample of this and uh, donate it to the geology museum. It's so cool. <laughs> Okay. You said it right. It's it's a it's one hundred percent organic iron ore. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we could uh, like sell it at Sprouts or Whole Foods or something? You know, one hundred percent organic iron ore. No additives. No preservatives. Uh, let's see. No no artificial colorings. It's all natural coloring, right? 